There you are, Mark. All right. <laughs> so since we're starting a few minutes late, I'm just going to go ahead and turn it over to you so that you can talk about the updates in an instant. All right. Thanks, Morgan. Uh, I'm going to talk slowly a little bit just to let Zoom catch up here and uh, make sure everybody's in. So um, yeah, welcome to Aspen Updates in an Instant, everyone, for the 2304 release. Um, believe it's already April. So got lots of good stuff here. Um, I'll let Jordan's going to talk about Aspen Lita again. So we're going to come back to that. Um, but we've got some cool administration things. We've got some events things, um, all kinds of neat stuff. So let's start with talking about events. So um, Cody's been working really hard on some of the event integrations um, and integrating uh, Communico. So we now support three different event systems, um, LibCal, Library Markets, Lib Library Calendar, and Communico. Um, so these are Communico events, and we can click on any of those. So we can do our regular search. So if we search for Lego and events, we can see all of our Lego events. Um, so we've got some free builds coming up. We've got some Lego tournaments. Of course, we get our Explore More where we can see our catalog results, um, get our bridge building. So we can do that. Um, if we are allowed to register, we've got the option to register on Communico. Um, so clicking on that will take us straight over there um, where we can actually do our registration. Um, we also then have the ability to add to list. Um, so if we wanted to create a, like, create a new list of Lego at the library for April, um, I'll go ahead and make this a public one. We're gonna show it in um, the research results. So we'll create that list. We got our free build, we're gonna add our, our Lego build tournament. Um, so we'll add that. We'll add our bridge building. Um, and our robotics. So we can add all of those in. Um, and then of course, because it's a, a list, we can do all kinds of neat list things like, um, add them to browse categories. So let's look at our lists. So here's our lists of Lego at the library for April. Uh, we just have a few things, but we could have more and we can say add those to the browse. Um, and we could of course create a, a subcategory for um, um, uh, make it a subcategory of events or something like that if we wanted to. So we'll create that category. It's on our home page. Um, so here's our Lego at the library. Um, yesterday I'd created a crafting at the library. So you can do all of those. Um, so we're hoping that's really good stuff for helping you build some lists and then you can build collection spotlights if you want. You can do the browse categories obviously and obviously uh, patrons can use these as well. Um, the other thing that we have is for patrons that just kind of want to um, register interest in an event. So um, I can add these to my event. So maybe I don't really want to create a list. I just want to kind of track what's coming. Um, so if I'm really interested in this Le Lego free build coming up on the 20th, I can add that. And maybe I'm going to add uh, the Teen Lego Masters to my events. I can also register at the same time. So it'll add to my events and then register. So that'll take me off to Communico in this case to do the registration. Um, and I can do the register there. Um, or we now have a list of your events um, right under your searches right now. Um, so this can show anything that's upcoming. So I can get an idea of like, oh, okay. I've got something April 20th, May 3rd, June 20th. So just things that I'm interested in, whether or not it requires registration, then of course I can remove those. Um, we can also see past events. So if maybe I went to um, that Lego free build and I was like, man, I really enjoyed that, but I don't remember what it was. Um, I can go check my past events if I've uh, 
saved it to my list of events there or my upcoming or my events. Um, so then I can go back and be like, oh yeah, I, I remember that. Let me go again and see if that's coming again. Um, so lots of great comprise, uh, or sorry, not comprise, <laughs> communico um, and events, all of that functionality for adding to lists and adding to your events works no matter what the underlying events platform is. So really cool stuff that we're doing there. Um, we've also done um, some indexing updates that I'll just talk through. So um, in terms of indexing, go ahead and check the release notes. Um, so we've just made some little tweaks to the formats. Um, so just we've had some libraries looking at them carefully and, and noticing that, hey, if things are both a journal and a book, let's make sure that it's journal, same with serials and books, some additional checks for some of the other fields. So um, if those apply to you, if you're using bib level format determinations, um, take a look at those. Um, but some just nice little tweaks there. Um, Another thing we did before I get into some of the administration updates, um, we've added the ability to disable um, tracking of IP addresses. And this is um, working with our friends in uh, the UK with PTFS Europe. Um, the uh, GDPR um, requires that you not track people. So we wanted to make sure that we're not doing that. Um, so in your system variables, there is an option to track or not track um, IP addresses. It is going to be turned off by default. Um, so if you do want to track that turned on, this is a feature that is essentially just used when we're noticing surges in traffic. Um, so it's not well used. Um, so turning it off is a good thing for um, for that international compliance. Um, that is stuff that shows up in usage by IP address. Um, so turning that off, you won't get a usage by IP address. If you turn it back on, you'll see that um, so that you can see like things that have been blocked in total requests. Um, we mainly use that for determining if there's abusive sites out there that are, there that are trying to load up uh, Aspen with uh, too many requests. Um, so now we've got some more admin things. Um, before I jump into that, let's go to the admin home. I just want to scroll up through the uh, uh, chat. Let's anything that we need to talk through. I think we got all of the questions, but if there, we'll have open time later for questions if you have more. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Um, so administration things, last time we added the search for settings, that's so popular that we added that in a bunch more places. So now in themes, um, we have the ability, so on all of these admin pages, we have the ability to search. So we can say, hey, I want to search for anything that is related to borders. So we can find all of those borders, or maybe we want to find, um, any of our badges. So we can search that easily filter down so that we can find those because um, we've got a lot of uh, settings. So being able to search those is really useful. Um, and that will, if things are collapsed into sections, it will find all of those, it, it will find them even within the sections. So um, really excited to, to do that. Um, we also, um, again, our friends in Europe added some additional function functionality for us. So we can search the sidebar now. So if we wanted to search for like Hoopla, uh, we can narrow that menu bar. Um, if we wanted to do, um, and then we can search within permissions as well. So, oh, I don't have permissions to, <laughs> Hold on, I don't have permissions to view permissions. So um, we will come back to that, but um, permissions can be searched. So um, if you're looking for a specific permission, it will show you what uh, where it is. Um, as long as we're here on themes, we also added a couple of new things. So we have the ability to copy a theme. Um, so we can now say, hey, this is no longer the default. This is our 
a copy of default. Um, and that allows us to more easily set up new sites. Um, so we'll just save those changes, come back. Um, so now we have both default and copy of default. Um, along with that, we've added the ability to um, share content. So for example, I've created this high contrast black theme um, that I wanna share with the community. So we've created some of these themes that we think are cool. We know that other libraries have created things that are cool. We've talked about sharing um, these kind of things for quite a while now. So this is the kind of the start of this infrastructure. Um, so I'm gonna go in and edit my high contrast black theme and I'm gonna click share with community. Um, so after I have shared this, so this is going to be a, um, uh, so we'll share that with the community. Um, this will then get shared to a, a content server and, um, And then you can go back to the list. So there is an approval process um, that we'll do um, just so that we can review content. Um, and that's something that we can discuss more is how we want to do that and who should do that. Um, but I can go through and approve that on the back end. So we're gonna say that is approved. And now when we do our, so we can now import community content and there will be permissions on this as, of course, so that you don't have to worry about people uh, pulling in whatever. Um, so we're gonna say, we're gonna import our dark theme and we're gonna say, this is our dark mode. Um, we're gonna have this extend our default, which is just gonna bring through our logos. And then we're gonna say, we're gonna assign this to our main library and our main location. Um, and we're gonna save those. So we now have the ability to have multiple themes apply to a single library. Um, what that does then is when I'm either logged in or logged out, we've got the languages and display button up here in the top right. And we'll now get a display mode, which lets you choose themes. So I can say, do I want the default theme or do I want the dark theme? So choosing the dark theme will, and then updating those preferences takes me into the dark theme. Um, and you can of course customize whatever you want here for your dark theme. Um, but hopefully with that sharing, it's super easy to set up um, and we're gonna be able to, to do some cool things for the community. Um, so we'll have default dark theme, um, high contrast themes on white and, and uh, dark backgrounds um, that you can choose to use if you want. Um, the, and of course you don't have to do that. You, you can certainly always have one and, and not give people options. So um, that is one more thing to maintain. So certainly feel free to just keep your, your one theme. Um, the other thing we did during sharing is more sharing of languages. So um, I'm gonna go back to default, but I'm gonna switch into Spanish here and we'll update those preferences. So here, um, we've been able to translate Aspen for a long time now, um, but one of the things that's been really difficult is sharing some of that content. Um, so I've got Swan's test server set up here as well, um, and it's connected to that same content um, server. So we're gonna switch into Spanish. Um, so we can see we've got some new things like your events. So if we wanted to translate your events, we'll go into translation mode. And we'll translate your events. And we'll update that translation. Um, so that's now gonna save that. So it does the translation just as it always has. And it's gonna send it to that shared content server. Um, 
Swan will now, so all of the other servers that see that as being untranslated, will check once a day um, to see if there's an updated one. So um, because we just loaded this, it's been more than a day, so I'm just going to force it to go check. Um, so when it checks, it's going to go through and say, hey, your event is now two event, eventos. Um, and it automatically applies that translation. So as we all translate more and more of Aspen and work on making that that uh, all of those translations 100% complete, we all kind of share that um, functionality and we share those translations so that uh, we all get the best of, of all worlds. Um, the other example is if we go through into Aspen administration here and we wanna set up a new language, we're gonna pull all of those default uh, translations um, from that the content server. So, uh, and it's going through and translating all of the things into Spanish now. So, um, so if we pull up our languages, and we'll see if I can do this in Spanish, we're gonna add a new one, we're gonna add, Chinese and that's Chinese. And we're going to leave this. Um, and we're going to save those changes. So we now have Chinese available. We're going to go back and we're going to say, let's get into our Chinese. And the content server doesn't have complete um, translations on it now. I didn't copy those all over yet, but it's going to pull over everything that it can. And oh, did I get the? Hold on. I might have gotten the uh, name of the language wrong. Yeah, should be ZH. Sorry, let's go back there. So this will be ZH. Save that. Now when we change, it's going to bring over the correct translations. Should. I think I goofed it up because I did the wrong thing. Um, so they, there we've got some translations coming in. So um, all right, yeah, so there's some translations. So um, yeah, any questions on any of that? Or I'll pass it over to Jordan to talk Aspen Lita. We're really excited to uh, have all of this started and, and bring more sharing. Okay, I will go ahead and share. I was anticipating a few more questions, but I think you just wowed all of us. All right, let's see what we have for Lita this time. Uh, so if you remember back to the last release, we we did uh, searching within facets within discovery. So now we have brought that same functionality to Lita. So I'll just give that, show you that really fast. So let's say I just saw a program at the library with a poet that was about tulips and I want to check out this guy's book, but I don't uh, remember what book it was. Someday I'll be able to type. There we go. Okay, so I see results for tulips, and there's a lot of them. There's 255. I'm not seeing the book I want right away, but all I can remember is that this guy, he did a book on tulips, and his name was Michael. So if I go into authors here, again, lots and lots of authors, 
but if I search for Michael, I get three, so I could either check all of those or now I recognize his name, Michael Susco. Check that update. And now we see the book that I'm looking for. So again, searching within facets now works in uh, Lita. The other thing that we did is bring the translation functionality into Lita, which is fabulous. So I'll show you where this is. Uh, you click on my account. And then down here where we had the little dark mode icon before, you will also see a language icon. So we have English right here. If I click on this, I can choose Spanish and then it will translate into Spanish for me. So you see all of the Spanish right here. I can click into um, my checkouts, give that a second to load and it will also load um, everything in Spanish. And there we go. A little bit of a word of warning here. Some of these strings ended up being, so. What I should say is that all of the translations in Aspen Discovery will automatically go over to Lita for you. Some of the strings are different. Even if they look like they might be the same, they might be slightly different. So if you're seeing something that you know is translated in Discovery, but you're not seeing it translated in Lita, go into Discovery, search your translations for that, that string, and then you might see that it's a slightly different one um, than it is in Discovery. And you'll just need to either copy that translation over or do whatever the slightly different translation is. I did see that in a few different places. Um, if you're not seeing it in there, let us know. Um, it's a big, big job to make sure we have all these translations moved over. So it is possible we missed one or two, um, but definitely the first time you open it up, you're gonna see a few things uh, that you need to translate. Again, that um, having that authoritative translation that we can pull from the community is also really gonna help with that as we add new things to Aspen, uh, making sure that everyone has those translations. Uh, other things that we did, uh, the geolocation for Android users, when you were first opening up the app, if you recall, we had to turn that off because there was a bug in the component that we used for that geolocation. That bug has been fixed uh, by the people that manage that component, so we are turning that geolocation back on. The other thing that we had people say was that when we went to the, the uh, barcode reader, it would open up permissions. Like we need permissions from the device in order to adjust the screen brightness because we want the screen super bright be able to be able to read those barcodes. Uh, patrons weren't really understanding why Lido was asking for those permissions. So now they'll get a message that says, uh, enable access to modify your screen's brightness to automatically make barcodes easier to read by scanners. So it's just gonna say like, hey, we're asking for this permission for a good reason because you wanna use your barcode. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to talk about is that something we did for Discovery was support for bibs with different item types on the same bib, um, and that is now also fully supported in Lita. Uh, so with that, oops, excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and turn it over to Mark Morgan, unless there's any questions.